let's say I've got some raw data. Uh, there's just a list of numbers. 733531864. And I want to ask the question, how spread out is this data? Okay. Well, let's have a look at it, shall we? Let's uh, draw a diagram. So, let's draw a number line. So, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and it's got 10. So, we've got a 7, we've got a 3, and another 3, and a 5, and another 3, and a 1, and an 8, and a 6, and a 4, and a 0. Okay? So, how spread out is this data? Well, it looks reasonably spread out, but really what I want is to find a numerical way of describing it. Some way where I can say, right, this value tells me how spread out the data is. And the larger that number, the, la the more spread out the data is. Okay? Smaller and more compact. So, it makes sense then that I would be looking for something that will allow me to compare each of these points with the mean. Because if I then look down the mean, I'd be able to say, right, well, each one of these is on average this far apart from the mean. So, it makes sense to find the mean. So, let's do that. Mean is equal to. Well, I'm going to have to add them all up to divide by how many there are. So I've got 7 and 3, that's 10, 13, 18, 21, 22, 30, 26, 40. So there's 40, and there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 numbers. Okay, brilliant. So 40 divided by 10 is 4. So the mean is 4, and I'm going to represent the mean in here with an x bar. This is the symbol that we will use to represent the mean. Okay, so the mean is there. So let's get another chart, shall we? Okay. Let's see. So there is the mean. Okay. So I want to find a way of looking at how far apart each of these points are away from the mean. So you can see that I could build up this little picture like looking at each of these lengths. Ooh, I could have done that one. That one as well. Okay. The average of all of these lengths away from the mean. So if I was doing this as a calculation, it would make sense then to have each of these numbers as they stand, and then I want to work out the distance away from each of these. So I'm going to have these as my x's, and I'm going to then subtract the mean from each of them. Okay, so if I do that, I'm going to have 7 take away 4, that's going to get me 3. Then I've got 3 take away 4, so minus 1. 3 take away 4 is also minus 1. 5 take away 4 is 1. 3 take away 4 is minus 1. 1 take away 4 is minus 3. 8 take away 4 is 4. 6 take away 4 is 2. 4 take away 4 is 0. And 0 take away 4 is minus 4. Okay. So, I want to find the average distance away from the mean. So it makes sense then that I'd add all those together and then divide by how many there are. Okay, it's an average after all, it's a mean. So three take away one, that gets me to two. Take away another one is one, add one is two, then I go to one, then I go to minus two, then I go to two, then I go to four, but then I go back to zero. So then I've got 0, they all add up to 0, and I divide by 10, and that gets me 0. Well, that doesn't really tell me anything, does it? 
because I, what I'd be saying then is that on average uh, these numbers are zero away from the mean which clearly isn't the case. So, and it isn't like by, um, by just by accident that all of these have added up to zero. They would with any numbers that I had started with. They, it, I would have had exactly the same problem. So how do I get around this adding them all up and finding it all add up to zero? Well, I need to make each of these positive somehow. And the way to make each value positive, one way of doing it, is to square each of them. So if I square each of them, I'm now getting this x minus x bar all squared. 3 squared is 9. Minus 1 squared is 1. Then we have 1, then 1, then 1. Minus 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16, 2 squared is 4, 0 squared is 0, minus 4 squared is 16. Right, so what is that equal to if I add them all up? Okay, so I've got 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 22, uh, 38, uh, 42, 48, 58. So, 58 is the total. Now this I could represent by saying, well, that's all of the x minus x bars squared added together. This symbol here is used to represent a sum. So it means add them all up. So add up all of those and I get 58. Now I want to divide that by how many there were, okay? So, if I want to divide that by how many there were, I'm going to divide it by n, 58 divided by 10, and that gets me 5.8, okay? So, let's have a look at this then, does that make sense? 5.8, are these on average 5.8 away from the mean. Well, the mean was at 4. The furthest away is 0 and 8. So that's only 4 away. And that's got to be the average? Well, that doesn't really make any sense. So, where was the problem? What's gone wrong? The problem is in this line here. Because I squared each of them, I now have a too large number. I need to reverse engineer this and get back by square rooting. So what we do is we added them all up, we divide by n, and now we need to square root. So we want the square root of 5.8. Right, now I can't do that one in my head, so I've got to use a calculator now. So the square root of 5.8 is 2.41. The three significant bits. 2.41. Now does that make sense? Looking at each of these gaps, 3, 1, 1, 1, 1, 3, 4, 2, 0, 4, 2.41 seems reasonable, okay? Seems reasonable. This is um, what would be referred to as the standard deviation of these numbers. Okay? It is, that is effectively what it is. The standard deviation tells you how spread out the data is. So for this set of data, we should, could say that on average, the numbers are 2.41 away from the mean. And that's what we refer to as the standard deviation. How much do the numbers deviate from the mean? And we represent this using a sigma. Okay, So the sigma represents the standard deviation. Now, there's only one problem. Okay, The problem with this 
is that if I'm just looking at a raw set of numbers like this, that's fine. However, in the grand scheme of things, if I'm going to use the standard deviation, the majority of cases, we are looking at a sample of a larger population. So, because it is a sample of a larger population, this actually doesn't give you a representative, representative uh, standard deviation of the population. When we were looking at sample mean and population mean, the sample mean is, an, is known as an unbiased estimator of the population mean. It is a good and representative sample. Uh, mean rather, okay? But for the standard deviation it doesn't, and it requires a small alteration. So when we are working in standard deviation in general, when we're working with problems in context, which for all intents and purposes on this course they will be, we actually use n minus 1. So yes, it would change the answer that we had, Okay, the answer that we would have would actually be, well, we'd have the 58, we would divide by 9, not 10, and then square root the answer. So square root 58 over 9, and that gets me uh, 2.54. Okay, it's close to what we had, but it's not quite the same. So this is the formula we use the standard deviation okay because we're going to be looking at samples of larger populations okay and this gives you an unbiased estimate